Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. I just wanted to give you the difference between Oanda and Dukas Copy. Uh, Oanda seems to work okay with Python uh, in the uh, developers or practice account. I have no problem with that, but we're now running into problems with a live account trying to get support. This is the chat and this is what I have to deal with. Now, in the meantime, let me show you the difference between this and G, uh, J4X and Duke's copy. So this is J4X from Duke's copy. I've just put in two positions. Let me just close these out as a test. Um, close position and then close position again. And it's kind of frustrating dealing with um, Oanda with this level of lack of support. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know how they survive as a business, but whatever. Okay, so what we've got running is we've got two a strategy running right now called Socket Strategy. This is a default. I've shown this before under Duca's copy, uh, one of the sample files. So I've cleared the messages. Now I'm going to go into my NetBeans, which is a Java um, program. And all it really is is just a socket client. And all it's going to do is it's going to send over a message to, to the J4X. So I've shown this before. If I run it as is, you can see here it is putting in the positions. Here's the first one, the long. And then the second one should be a short. So here's the short. So those are working as uh, expected. Now, what does that mean for me? I'm going to be honest. Uh, working with the Dukas copy, J4X is pretty cumbersome. Meaning if you're planning to use the strategies and work with it, uh, from within J4X, forget it. What I would recommend is to do exactly what I'm just showing you here. Uh, where's my NetBeans? To use the set the the NetBeans um, and create your Java classes or programs uh, within NetBeans and have it connect into uh, J4X. So again, this is using socket uh, sockets. Uh, it's probably the most, um, uh, the easiest or the most convenient. So let's see how our, oh, we are now connected. All right, later. Uh, hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Okay, after probably an hour waiting around with different people, um, I really don't think Oanda has their act together to get a simple thing done. Now, if I do get it working, which I'm hoping, as you can see here, uh, this is according to my public access for personal access tokens. I'm banned. <laughs> now the guy on the phone said, I'm not banned. So they're gonna try to fix this problem. It seems you have to wait 20 minutes to get access to somebody um, via the web chat then you have to call in the general, in my case, the 416 area code number because they are in Toronto. I chose somewhere among the options FX trade application with a live account. Uh, I told them it was kind of urgent to get the uh, account running. And this is the truth that I was trying to get this thing up and running. I can get it running no problem in a practice account, but not running in my live account, which I have had since January. Now, to be fair to the guy, he's gonna try, but I've heard that quite a few times with Oanda and trying ends up being um, with basically ending up in a big zilch. So what I did was during the call, I just told him, hey, look, dude, I can get my interactive brokers account running. I can also get Duca's copy, copy running fairly quickly as I'm doing right now. 
Um, he's going to try to respond ASAP. But the response time here at this email, which is a joke, uh, one to two business days. So if you have problems with Awanda and they're this slow in trying to not just answer a question, but just to rectify a problem, uh, going back and forth, it could take weeks. Um, now, there is a forum. Because the forum is just that, a forum, I'm not going to put up my account information up on the forum to get them to rectify this problem. So if Awanda really thinks that they're going to get away with me pulling my hair out for, I don't know, two days to get an answer and another two days to, to go back and forth between each uh, contact, that's a real uh, joke. Um, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the live account running. Um, and the way Oanda's set up uh, here, you can connect into your platform. So if you're able to start your platform, you can actually uh, call in, uh, you can actually access the, the, uh, the, the, the platform, the J4X platform. So it, this is a big struggle. Um, like I said, I can get Oanda working with the practice account, but the live account's a different story. Um, I'm sure some people are probably having success with it, um, but the way it's looking, um, if I go on. All right, so uh, here we are on Oanda Forex Peace Army review, okay? So these sort of responses since mm, roughly, uh, let's see. This was uh, July 27th. So uh, I'm sure a lot of these bad reviews are just that, bad reviews. So here we are. Uh, let's read this one. Guy from Montreal. Oh, and is a joke. Don't waste your time. Failed to register a live account, which is what I'm going through. Never am I such poor customer service. Yep. I uploaded the docs, two documents, one with verifiable tax number here, absolutely nothing. Then they sent it requesting a certified true copy of my two week old 10 year passport, likely because I'm honest and law buying. In any case, I drive across the city to notarize and certify, upload it to Oanda, and guess what? Today marks seven more days of radio silence. Not sorry, we, we're not moving forward. Um, I went through the same thing myself with opening the account. Uh, it was a complete joke. I have sent a single email requesting an update. No response to that either. So yeah, this but I wouldn't consider depositing a single penny with them. I've got twenty bucks. <laughs> Yesterday I I bit the bullet, register an open account with another FX choice. I uh, received an email, congratulate on my verif account, which is now live, and oh, and is a joke, don't waste your time. Let's see what this one says. Um, so, okay, let's just see. Update. Uh, holdover, they did not provide me detail on your turns out. First, let me start by saying that I've been with for a month, and until these problems with the wire chat, I was semi-satisfied with the product. I don't like the FX trade, both Windows and Android freezes, FM. Although mid, I found that when a premium, if I deposit, and they told me the benefits of will stay even if I withdraw money. Orlando premium? Well, that's not good. My, and it proceeded to ask my full name, the date of birth, uh, wasn't in my, until I reached them and I called them that they would send a message requesting can't experience H. Uh, I entered a live chat. Can't I call it H? Worst bank I've ever dealt with. Yeah, that's true. Can't get any information. It was unusual each time. So whole, help, being held by HSB compliance department. So that's that's dealing with Oanda because I would imagine that's Oanda out of. I think they're out of either China or Hong Kong. Then just contact them with the live already requested Oanda. May, my bank contact them and explain they already sent messages and have later. I forgot to mention, I've also requested twice. So they tie up this guy's money. 
My bank calls and they refuse to provide any information. I call HSBC again, explain the situation. They can't find the wire in their system, but the rep, voila, may just have been taking me off the phone since she was tired of being on hold for so long. Our partner, HSP with us, they haven't worked with their bank on fulfilling. And I respond, so this guy's money is being tied up between HSBC, which is working on behalf of Rwanda, I guess. I didn't really transmit a status request. Then I'll give a little more time before filing a police report. Wow. Lack of effort has put into receive, resolving. I understand that my 14,000 US means very little to Oanda. That calling is a nightmare. They probably don't want me to deal with this, but wow. Oanda, if you're reading this, I recommend you set up the conference call so you can get off the hook. From If you prove to me that is the problem, which I already suspect. Oh, wow. That, that's pretty bad. Okay, next one. However, when it comes to hearing the voice of a customer, they suck. Yesterday I gave him a friendly telling him that we should H currently only at twenty dollars and then wow instead of saying thank you for your, we we're doing something about it yep you know what they locked wow not trusted bucket shop like most other five cents CFD they are for CFD they are non existent at least for Shady ads about micro and um, mini lots. Um, they took, and then I opened a point zero that happened to be live chat is useless. I asked the CFD for one. My answer was CSR has no idea about Dow. Wow. I've been in Orlando for a couple of months. I'm speech how bad their customer service is. Yep. Basically, they have no customer um, that you can rely on. Uh, Put my order in. I put my stop at 11:38. I got stopped out, even though the price never dropped to 11:41. Besides, when I checked with many other brokers, I could not find more than one broker that showed the the platform is very and consistently logs you off and on. And tried for it and the client cannot wait when I leave this broker. But when I went eight years, maybe nine, found them the best of the lot. But they would switch to dynamic spreads, which was never. And just to add, if I'm honest, I have lost far by much money with them than I ever made. But that was completely my own fault. I've asked to withdraw a little over three thought, and they are now making it difficult. They say I can only withdraw to a bank account that is now closed. Huh. Wow, this is not a good sign. They have a strange policy of amounts methods. They depict how much where you can. Withdraw to the account I am asking to with to my bank has been used to fund the account is in wow um, Spoiled by the worst spreads ever seen is good and they're offer a good range of markets to trade Especially that allows see if their spreads are hideous During news or periods lower vault, which is most of the time they make extremely wide spreads thus making it almost impossible to trade FX Recently, almost doubled the spreads in many of their CFDs for no reason, which seems like blatant written off customers. Oil has moved from two points to four points. NASDAQ from point to one, from half a point to one point. If you run the math, you'll likely find that when the widespread stop you being profitable. So, there you go. Now, if you do the same thing with uh, Forex peace army now i'll show you how bad some of these companies are fx pro <laughs> at least forex peace army is fairly honest okay so you get this big warning uh so they've asked for the ceo for response last message the fpa for forex peace army Sent was on January 25, 2016. FX Pro's representative waited until October 2016 to reply. Wow. <laughs> the company is now refusing to further cooperation unless FPA signs a non disclosure agreement and refuses to allow FPA to have an email exchange with the CEO. <laughs> the only reason the FPA can think of for requiring an NDA is that any report of on the incident will incriminate someone in upper management 
who is still working for the company. There are two reasons we can think of for denying con contact with the CEO. Either the CEO has not been made aware of the incident or the CEO does not care that the company has a history of using unethical methods to try to manipulate the reviews. FPA recommends against, in red, dealing with FX Pro until the CEO steps in to resolve the situation. Here, here, here's the funny thing. They've FX Pro's issues with fake reviews and to make certain that the issue would not repeat. <laughs> oh, this is so bad. Okay, so that's FX Pro. So if we look up at, um, Forex Peace Army, now with Duca's copy, um, I think there are a lot of complaints, but here's the difference. So they're getting a three, they're getting a three and a half. Ooh, <laughs> that, I'll show you the difference here. So you get um, complaints, right? So I'm not gonna waste people's time here, but look, Terrible Italian support, blah, blah, blah. But look, they're replying. Duca's copy uh, replied. Once again, another complaint. Duca's copy replies. Uh, and these are fairly recent from April 2017. So what does that mean? Well, it seems that uh, Duca's copy does care about their reputation on these popular review boards um, so they are responding to a lot of them from this year which I think is a good sign and um, I gotta be fair uh, this is a good selling point for Duca's copy at least they they care about their their reputation whereas with uh, Oanda all, all the complaints which are pretty frequent um, quite a bit actually and uh, there, there's no response from Oanda that is a big difference between Oanda and uh, Duca's copy so I'm going to check out a response and get back to you because they, they did reply via email as they promised so ta-da on that over and out for now okay let's be fair uh, this Oanda guy did respond but again, it's just a robotic scripted message and just telling me how I should already know how to generate a, um, a token. This is pretty useless. Um, I don't know what's going to happen beyond this. Um, so I'm going to be honest. This just goes to show how so far bad Oanda's support is which I wouldn't even call it support, just scripted robots that pick up phones. And uh, this is the kind of nightmare that you'll deal with. Uh, good luck with that. I'll let you know how I go about with the um, Duca's copy as I dig more into it and do it through the Java, the Java um, end with the J4X. Okay, later, over and out later.